Hello, Rob here from the Flanagan Homestead. Today I'm going to finish putting on the board and bat and siding on my bathroom on the campground I'm building, the rustic campground build. And I'm going to show you how to put on board and batten siding. And it's board and batten technically. Most people call it board and bat. A batten is a wood strip that's used to secure things against the wall and hold things pressed back. And so uh, I start this video here at the house. Uh, I have my small goat barn that I've built here. And this has board and bat siding on it. But this is not a true board and bat. This is a uh, board and... Uh, this is plywood and bat. And there's a uh, rough rough sawn or rough faced plywood that you typically use in soffit. I use that against the walls and the battens are purely for cosmetic to make give it that good barn look. I don't really need the battens to hold it down. The plywood is screwed into the two by fours. So, but this is a pretty common example of what people are calling board and bat and, and you can and it looks good, but this isn't true board and bat. So I, I have the plywood and I have thin strips here because it's a smaller building and I have them every foot so that when you're doing it with plywood you need a strip every four feet because that's where the plywood seams are so you typically do it on a foot or on 16 inches which will give you three or four um, bats per piece of plywood but uh, let's head down to the campground and start building and i'll show you a more traditional board and bat Okay, behind me here you see the bathroom on my campground that I've been working on. This is a little bit more traditional board and bat, but even this is not a true traditional board and bat because I have plywood behind uh, the board and bat to give it uh, sheer strength uh, on the walls. And I have traditional framing, which is vertical. And uh, most board and bat siding uh, done in traditional barns and whatnot are post and beam, and then they have horizontal girts that you put it on. So I'll explain that more. But this is pretty traditional. I have uh, one foot wide boards with three inch bats going on top of it. I have my uh, country door that I manufactured myself to give it the look. But uh, anyway, this is more traditional board and bat siding. I'm gonna show you how I did it, but uh, let's talk about what is true traditional and why you'd put on board and bat. Here's a small scale example of what post and beam board and bat would look like. Uh, I'll try to edit in some video from our uh, barn at the Christmas tree farm that is done this way more traditionally. But uh, this is not gonna be permanent. I'm just doing this for an example, but I have my deck post here representing the post on a barn and uh, my other deck post they are already have their strength due to the cement laterally they're not going to fall back and forth so i don't need shear strength so i don't need plywood board and bat will not give you much shear strength or the wall leaning you need to have something else bracing it up so uh, i'm just going to use my deck uh, rim joist here as an example and then also i just scabbed this in for a second so you can saw it so see what's going on so traditionally on the barns you have posts and then you have girts that are going across horizontally so just for example sake i'm going to go ahead and put a couple uh, boards on here to show you how it's done one thing to look for if you have a board that's starting to cup i don't know if you can see this on the video but this board is cupping this way so if i was to put this out like this the bats would be uh this board tried to warp more it would try to lift the bat so i want to put the cup so that the bow is out and then the pushed back edges of the board are against the wall so i'm just going to put this up normally i'd start at one end and uh, move down to the other end you'll put a level on especially for your first board make sure you're level and then what you're going to do is you'll simply put a nail on the outside edge of one side of the board. This is one of the um, important things about board and bat is you need, you're just putting it on one side because if this board swells when it gets wet or contracts more or when it dries, then it needs to be able to expand and contract. And if you nail down both sides, you'll split this board. Uh, so that's one of the things about board and bat. You can take a tree, mill it, and while it's still curing, you can put it up with board and bat and it will be allowed to uh, expand and contract. So then the next board, check the cupping again, get it so it's flat against there. We'll go up against it, but you'll have approximately a one inch space, depending on uh, your application. It could be more, it could be less, but there's gonna be a little bit of space in between here put the level on it. I don't have, I'm not going to do that on this demonstration. And I'm going to 
nail the same side that I did the last one. So in this case, both nails are on the left hand side. There's nothing on this side. So if I was to rip this up, it would tear the board apart really quickly. Okay, after we've got the boards nailed on, we're going to take our bat and put it directly over the center of the board, or the hole between the boards, the gap between the boards, and we're going to nail it on. And I will notice, I did notice in my haste to uh, make this video, I, I'm going to show you what not to do. This board I nailed appropriately. It's very close to the edge, so my three inch bat will cover the nail, which you want it to cover. It'll cover the gap. And then there's no nail over here, but it'll be enough on the board that it'll be covering the board and it won't lift up. This nail up here on top, if you can see it, uh, I put it just wide enough that with my three inch bat, I'm covering the gap in the board. I am holding onto this board, but this nail is gonna be just outside of my bat. And that's not the look that we're going for. We wanna have it look more like this where the bat covers all the other nails and you won't see any of them. So if I was to put this up here at the right height, see this nail is covered. I'm going to nail in the bat and it's not gonna hit either of these boards, okay? And then I'm gonna hit right here in the bat. It's not gonna hit either of the boards. And now this edge of this board, the inside board will not lift up. This one's secured and then we'll just continue on down the line. Board and bat can expand and contract. Have your nails in tight enough that they are hidden behind the bat. I'm taking my little demo wall down now, but you can see if I had nails on all four sides, uh, it would hold up really tight. But because it's only on one side, you need the bat to hold it strong. Without the bat on there, this board can come out pretty easily. With the bat on there, it's not going to come out. Here is a quick look at a barn that was built a few years ago on our Christmas tree farm for events. It's traditional post and beam with the girts horizontally inside and we've got one foot boards and the three inch bats on the outside. It has been stained to, for a darker look. So this is what the inside walls would look like. You got the girts, the board and the bat is away on the outside. Here's more standard, no windows. The girts are all two feet apart. Okay, I did some prep work off camera that you didn't see me doing, but you can see all these boards. These are cut to length. I'm gonna set them on a rail that I put on here uh, to just to give them the right height. And they've already cut to length, so I'm gonna just, be, should be able to grab them, place them in, level them up, or plumb them up, I should say, since we're going up and down, and nail them in. And I'm gonna go across with the boards, and it should go reasonably quickly because the cuts are made. Uh, I do have a window up above here, a small window above the bathroom. I'm just going to put the boards in place uh, right over the top of those and then I'm going to mark it from the inside and then cut out that window and it'll uh, give it a nice even cut. Uh, one of the things that I do differently, you can see I have plywood and then I have house wrap on it because this is going to be a more of a weather tight living space than just a barn. Uh, because I have the plywood for the sheer strength and it's uh, traditional uh, framing, meaning the uh, studs are vertical, uh, a lot of times when I put the boards on, all they're going to hit is the plywood. So uh, in some places I have ring shake nails that I'm going to use actually over here with, where there's nothing exposed. But on the inside, a lot of this on the far side is not going to be covered. So if I put it nails through the there through the plywood, there's going to be a lot of nails sticking out the other side and if I lean up against it, I'll get hit. So uh, this is non-traditional. Uh, some people recommend using screws for board and bat because if you ever need to remove a board, you could just take out the screws a lot easier than yanking out the nails. But uh, I have inch and five eighths screws. So that goes through my inch thick board and then it'll go into the plywood, but not through the plywood. And the, the grooves on the nail hold much better, or on the screw, hold much better than a nail. So by putting it in with screws, one, I could take it in and out more easily. Two, I don't have to drive it all the way through, but the grooves will hold more secure uh, against the wall. So that's why I'm gonna be using a lot of screws going into this plywood. Uh, and again, there are places that there's gonna be studs there, and I could use the framing gun in those situations. I have a board right here that I'm gonna set the boards on and I, it's marked 
where I want the right side edge of each board to go. Uh, you don't need to do this, but I wanted to have the exact same width, the full board on this corner, every board down in the far corner. So by uh, measuring out the gap that I wanted uh, and creating and ex the exact same spacing all the way along. I'm gonna have a one foot board here and a one foot board at the far end and everywhere in between. Now you don't have to do that with board and bat. That's one of the beauties of it. You could have a 10 inch board and a 12 inch board, eight inch, 12, and some people like it irregular, but uh, just use whatever they have. But I have all 12 inches and I want them to be consistent all the way down. I'm also going to be nailing on the right hand side as I go to the right, not that that's right or wrong, but I'm right handed. So if I'm, I'm going to want to be holding the nailer in my right hand or the screw gun in my right hand and it just makes it easier instead of me uh, trying to hold on the level and then reach across and do things on the left hand side, I'll just have it with my right hand and drive it in that way. Okay, board number one going on. Set it on the rail, I got it lined up with the line, push it up against the wall get the level on it, make sure we're plumb. There we are there. Get my, oh, all right. Take my nail gun. Oh, didn't want the double hit. And every two feet, approximately, Okay, I've come up to where we're hitting the door. So we've got our boards coming across here and then we have the door that's not gonna allow us a full piece. This is three and three quarters inch gap right here. Our space, I have about a three quarter inch gap that I want anyway. So I'm gonna cut this three inches on the edge of the board or just under three inches. It doesn't have to be super tight because there's gonna be a trim board going over the top of this covering any gap here. So let's say I'm gonna cut this two and three quarters inch strip going up the board and then I'll leave it notched so that the one solid piece will fit in there and it'll we'll just have the board the bat on this section and it'll the edge of the other board will be over here as it normally would be a foot a foot away so here's my line this is going above the door everything up here this is on the outside edge everything over here is waste being removed So I got the bats cut up at the house. I have them down here ready to put on, but before I do that, I need to put trim around the door uh, so I know what I'm butting up to and up on top, I'll put it up to there. I am gonna use five inch thick trim boards, which is kind of wide, but uh, it's gonna give this narrow door a wider look. And the other beautiful thing is this five inch thick board is gonna hit the door jam, the board that's right next to it, and the gap where the bat's supposed to cover all of that will be covered with one board and it'll really clean up the look around the store. Now that the boards are up, I realized I did not have enough bats, so I took some wider boards, ran them up to the house, and ripped them on the table saw to the three-inch bat width. 
Okay, I got more of the dimensions that I needed. Unfortunately, I had to drive back up to the house and cut three inch bats. If I had it to do all over again, I would uh, make a better list when I had the Sawyer up cutting my tree and then I would have had a lot more bats. And I wouldn't, he, what I did in an hour and a half, he probably could have done in 10 minutes with his mill. So anyway, but it's gonna all work out good and time to take it back down to the campground. All right, I'm in the process of getting my battens on. I'm probably two thirds of the way down the wall. I'm, uh, remember I'm using screws, which is not completely normal because I'm going into the plywood. Uh, I used one and a half or one and five eighths or one and three quarters uh, going through the board into the plywood because the board's an inch thick. But now because the batten's further out, I'm at two and a half inch uh, screws that I'm putting in. Uh, there's a number of different ways you could do this. Remember, you don't want your fastener to hit the board, okay? It, you want it in the gap, and it's just pressing back on the boards. It's not actually screwed through the boards. If you do happen to hit a board, you should hit the one that has the screws in. In my case, the one's on the right-hand side. If I hit this board, it wouldn't hurt anything. If I hit this board, it would restrict the ability to expand and contract. So I don't want to do that. I'm lining mine up, uh, just looking at the top and lining it up as I slide it up so that it's perfectly centered. That's easy to do with only a three inch board. And then I am get putting the level on because I put a level on all the boards, putting a level on the bat and making sure that the, my screw is right in the middle and it's gonna go right between the boards. Here's my bathroom door with the board and bat siding. I like how it turned out. I still need to put a pole on the, hand, uh, on the door, but uh, I like the look. When you're putting your board and bat up on the gable end, uh, you're gonna have a consistent slope. Unfortunately, it's gonna be consistent. So you don't need to be marking, measuring the long point and the short point. This roof line, I know, because I built it as a 712 pitch. So, and it's nice to have a big speed square, not just a little one. And so that's uh, the common on your speed square markings, 712. So you could just mark the 712 pitch, uh, seven rise, 12 run. You could just mark that and cut that off and uh, it'll match your roof line. You could cut multiple boards I've already got some of the other shorter lengths cut to the 712 and I'll be lifting them up and they're going to match the roof line each and every time. Okay, there we are with my board and bat siding install, slightly non-traditional because it went over plywood, wasn't on post and beam, but it give us, gave us a good country look. And thanks for joining me on the Flanagan Homestead where Christmas trees are my business, teaching including horticulture is my job, and outdoor projects like this are my passion. Keep checking for updates. The campground's gonna be open soon. Be blessed, everyone.